at 11. A devastating new number in the California wildfires. Hundreds more added to the list of the missing. Tonight, we focus on the outpouring of support headed south. It made me feel really sad, so I wanted to help. Portland's mayor hints he might not run for re-election, but what do you think? Open your app and get ready to vote in our viewer voice poll. Plus, to some, it's an adorable sight. They're awesome, they're cute. To others, it's a furry invasion. If I get a cage, I'm gonna catch them and have them for dinner. Another local neighborhood overrun by rabbits. But first, at 11 o'clock, the horror in California continues. As of tonight, there are now 63 people confirmed dead from the wildfires. And add to that an astonishing 600 people unaccounted for. That's hundreds more than first reported missing. The town of Paradise in Northern California was wiped out by the campfire. You can see it there. Images, yeah. Ashes. Now the mission is even more somber. A detailed search to find victims. The fire whipped through town with little warning and many may not have been able to outrun the flames. It happened so fast, I think that they, they would have been in, in serious trouble. Everybody is struggling. We lost our homes, we lost our work. To the south, firefighters are still struggling right now to make some serious progress on the Woolsey fire. And another fire has now erupted in Ventura County, but moves slowly and is nearly contained tonight. The White House announced today President Trump will visit California on Saturday. Closer to home, a Vancouver boy is proving you don't have to be rich or even have a full-time job to help those impacted by the fires. KGW's Catherine Cook met this boy tonight, learned what he's doing to give back. And Catherine, this is just uh, one of those kids that will inspire you a bit, huh? Oh, absolutely, Dan. We can all learn something from his spirit. It can be intimidating to raise money and give back, but this young man figured out what he could do and he did it. And he's getting a helping hand from Dutch Bros to make his donation even more valuable. It's a rite of passage into fall. The crisp air beckoning us to pick up leaves before the rains come. But with each pass of the rake, 12 year old Max Coons is thinking beyond his own yard. He's thinking of the people and animals in California whose homes and leafy lawns were destroyed by fire. It made me feel really sad, so I wanted to help. After school, I was telling him about the fires. Max's mom, Shannon, says she didn't tell her kids to scare them. She just wanted them to think beyond themselves. I think it's really good for them to realize that, you know, everything isn't how it is in your area at the moment where you're at. That's when Max got an idea. I'm going to be going to people's houses and raking leaves, mowing lawn, and like get money and help the animals and people that are being hurt. Shanna. Extremely proud, yeah. Posted about her son's idea on Facebook. I didn't know it would be shared so much. Since then, he's raised about $165 and knows exactly what he'll do with the money. Well, I can go to Dutch Bros and they'll double it for me. Dutch Bros has pledged to match donations for California fire victims up to $150,000. I'm really thankful that we're not down there in, in that situation right now. But now Max knows he can still make a difference. Like every leaf from a tree, every dollar adds up and every hope of making a difference. The world is quite big, but also quite small. Way to go, Max. Now, if you don't want to rake leaves or mow the lawn for donation money, you can always just drop a few dollars in the bucket here at Dutch Bros, any Dutch Bros in the Portland metro area through Monday. Again, they're going to double up to $150,000 in donations from folks in California. Dan and Laurel, back to you. Wow, what a great example Max is. Max just seems like a, a good person and a good story. Thanks, Catherine. A lot of people are, are uh, helping out tonight. Uh, in, those folks in California, the Oregon Humane Society, for instance, they're helping with some shelters that were overwhelmed by animals there. They've taken in at this point 25 cats from Northern California. So the cats are going to arrive here tomorrow and they're going to go up for adoption early next week. These were cats that were in shelters before the fire and moving them uh, here makes some more rooms for more room there for the animals that need to be uh, placed places after this fire that they've dealt with. And an Oregon couple is lending a hand too, helping some of the bigger animals affected by the fire. Pat and Nikki James own Outlaw Equine Transport and More. That's in Boring. And they're driving truckloads of animal feed right now down to California along with medicine and other supplies. And we're teaming up with the Red Cross to raise money for the California fire victims. They're on the ground. They're helping provide food and shelter for these evacuees. 
and for the people who really just lost everything down there. You can donate right now on KGW.com. We just got word tonight of an earthquake that hit off the coast of Southern Oregon. Yeah, let's get right over to Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino live in the Weather Center. Matt. Thanks, Dan. Two earthquakes about 140 miles southwest of Port Orford and Coos Bay here. Uh, out over the ocean here. So far, no reports of anybody feeling this, but it just happened about, oh, about an hour and a half ago. And actually now we've got three quakes in that area, ranging from 4.1 to 4.5. So again, those are moderate strength. They're not weak, but they're strong enough to feel. But again, they are out over the ocean obeys a ways. Um, no word on any tsunami threat. I doubt it with this type of an earthquake, but we'll keep you posted on that. And again, we get any more information. We'll let you know later in the newscast. Back to you. All right, Matt, thank you, sir. Uh, in a developing story tonight, Gresham police are searching for gunmen after a bullet hits a woman sleeping in her home. This happened around four this morning on Northeast 162nd Avenue, just north of Burnside. Uh, here's how police say it happened. They say that the bullet was most likely fired from inside a nearby apartment, went through the wall, traveled across a field, and then into the wall of another apartment where it grazed this sleeping woman on her ankle. We counted, we went down there, three apartments had bullet holes in them tonight. Another neighbor said she heard the, uh, the shots and hit the ground immediately. You're in sure panic. Not sure what to think or how to feel. Your heart's racing. You're just uneasy about everything. Police believe that the suspects actually went into a specific apartment that they were intending to shoot a person inside, but didn't end up hitting them. They haven't identified anyone involved in this. New tonight, take a look at this. Firefighters had to hoist a car off its side. This is in Happy Valley. The driver had smacked right into the house on Monner Road. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but no easy task getting that car out. Crews had to bring out a heavy rescue team to shore up the house before they can pull the car away. Hey, take a quick look at your screen here. Police in Tiger need your help finding a missing woman tonight. That's 57 year old Martha Brown. She has developmental disabilities, um, could become disoriented. They say she was last seen leaving her home, which is near Hall Boulevard in Sattler Street around 10 this morning. Martha, they say, may be trying to use the TriMet buses. If you see her, please immediately call 911. Should Mayor Ted Wheeler run for a second term? That's our viewer voice poll question tonight. After Mayor Wheeler seemed to hint today, he might not make it that far. If I don't serve more than two years beyond today, it will be on this question. How do we maintain the rights and the dignity of people living on our streets and balance that with the rights of others in the community? Wheeler made the comments during a keynote speech on homelessness, a speech interrupted when the mayor tried to explain the steps police take to warn homeless campers before they move in to clear a camp. And the vast majority of times, that's what happens. No, we find, not. we, do you want to give the speech and I'll be on the reactor panel? You're not telling the truth. I am telling the truth, and you will have other people here who actually do this work who will tell you what they do. An Oregonian reporter tweeted that as the mayor walked off stage, he muttered to himself he couldn't wait for the next 24 months to be over, meaning the end of his term. The mayor issued a statement today saying well, he often mutters, but that he'll decide whether to run for re-election sometime next year. Well, let us know what you think. Should Mayor Wheeler run for re-election? Just go to KGW.com slash vote or click the Vote Now tab on your KGW app to weigh in. We'll check back on the poll later in the show. So state wildlife officials have been trying to figure out what to do with the sea lions at Willamette Falls for a while now. And now they're hearing from the feds who just gave them the go-ahead to kill them. Federal officials will allow up to 93 animals to be trapped and killed on the lower Willamette every year. Officials say the sea lions are eating salmon and they had the uh, they had the spawning grounds and removing them will help save threatened steelhead and Chinook salmon. Wildlife officials can only remove sea lions observed in the areas for two days or animals that are seen eating fish. When we come back, an inspiring act of kindness followed by devastating news. Portland parents of four adopt four more siblings and after a long journey through the foster care system, to finally feel like we did it, we're done, all is well. And then a year later to realize, really? Like terminal brain cancer. Now her family's on a mission to make the most of their time left.
And later, we're going to visit a Vancouver neighborhood that's dealing with this adorable little problem. I'm Matt Safina. We had a lot of sunshine today, but we still have an air quality warning going up into parts of tomorrow. But don't worry, there's a lot of really good days on the way in terms of air quality and some great imagery of today's weather, both in time lapse, still photography, and new weather satellite imagery from over the Pacific. We love this time of year. Part of the reason the KGW Great Toy Drive, it's underway and we need your help to collect toys for kids this holiday season. You always help us out. You can donate a new unwrapped toy at any regions, Wells Fargo or local Toyota dealership. For a complete list of all the collection sites, visit KGW.com toy.